Hi guys and welcome back to Nodeflow. Today we'll take a look on how to create this beautiful animation of a rubber toy flying in the sky. We'll see how we can attach the balloons to the geometry using the stitch constraints and also how we can create some proper balloons using the pressure constraints. So without further ado, uh, let's dive in. So I will start by creating a geometry node, calling it balloon toy. I will copy this name, save, and I will paste it here. Now we can go inside and we can create our toy. So this will be the base. So I will uncheck the other shader. I will create a boolean set to union. That's because if you can see this one, actually there are different parts. I want everything to be just one single part and the boolean will actually do that for us. So now you can see if I select, it's just one single mesh. And then I want to remesh, send this one to 0, 0, 27. So let's create the lines. So I will drop a line node. I will change the points to 20 and I will change the direction to be not on Y but here on Z and I will set the Y to 0. Now that we have this I want a way to select the first point of the primitive so this one and the 19th. So, so what I can do I can start creating a group I want to group points not primitives. I want the name of this group to be root and to make sure that the group actually gets called as the name that I wrote here I will write here dollar $OS. That means that the group will take the same name of this node. So if you click here with middle mouse, you see that's working. And here we want to group just zero. So now this one is grouping only the first point. So now we have our first point selected, but we want to select the last. You see, if I did something like that and then wrote 19, yeah, that would work. But if we want to change the number of points that we have in this line, the 19, it will just shift over here. In order to make that procedural, so it doesn't matter how many points you have here, use a sort node. With sort, you can actually change the order of the points. So I want to change them on the Z axis and I want to reverse. So as you can see now, the zero is here. So I can just copy this one and select in the zero. And now if you see, I'm selecting also the last point. And no matter how many points I have here, this will always be the last one. And I will name this one tip. So now with that, that we have our line and our geometry, I actually want to start creating a copy to point. I want to copy my lines on top of my geometry. Although right now it will be a mess, like a, lots of lines, because I want to select some specific parts where I should copy these lines. So before doing that here, let's actually create a mask by feature. I will just disable the point visualization and click in here to see the mask. I just want to see, to change a little bit the angle to something like 55.5. And then I want to add a scatter. It's just the easiest way to add some points. And to make the scatter follows the rule of the mask by feature, I want to change the density attribute to be mask. So as you can see now it's following the rules that we defined here. We want to scatter just 20 points and we want to add a global seed of 25. And now we can fit this one into the copy to point. So for now what we can do is actually add a merge and visualize all of this together. So this one with the proper uh, geometry. So this is the result that we have. Uh, the next step will be to scale these curves a little bit. So some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. So using an attribute randomize, we want to randomize the scale of each one. So I'll write P scale and I'll set the minimum value to be something like 0 0.9 and the maximum value to be 1.5. If you check now, some of them are longer, some of them are a little bit shorter before and after. And the next step is to actually add the balloons. So I'll create a sphere. I will set the sphere to be polygons, change the frequency to 7 and the radius on Y to 0 0.7 so it looks a little bit more like a balloon. And I will scale it to be 0 0.32. Now we can add another copy to point. So here we have our geometry to copy, but now we need the points to copy this geometry to. I will create a blast. I'll, I will plug in it here and I will change this one to tip. And right now it's deleting the tip because that's what the blast does. So I want to delete non-selected and I have only the last part of the, the curves. Feeding it into the copy to point, I have something like that. I don't want to visualize this mask. So I will go into the mask by feature and actually uncheck here. And now we can see everything together. If we plug this one into the final merge, we have our basic setup. So if you notice, there is something going on. There are some intersection here. And also it doesn't look like they are oriented properly with the line. Uh, that's because the copy to point is not passing our normal attributes. So if we actually delete this normal, now it's actually correct. So if you go into the sphere, now we can rotate on X of 90. And now you can see they will get orientated correctly to the normals. So I will create an attribute wrangle and set it here. In the wrangle, I will write a code to make these normals more open. That means that they will start from zero, zero, zero in the center of the world and they will go all spaced up like a sort of like an explosion. The quickest way to do that is to add a vector, call it origin and set it equal to zero comma zero comma zero. That means that we have a vector in the center of the world. The next step is that we want to set our normals that define our orientation to origin plus deposition. Close it. And then we want to also normalize it. Otherwise it will 
create weird results. It's always a good habit to normalize your vectors. Now you see they are way more explosive. Because they are too explosive right now, I want a way to blend between this position and the upper y position, so pointing just straight up. It's very easy, we need to create a vector that points straight up. So vector up equal to set, and then we'll set it to 0, 1, 0. That means it will be pointing up on the y-axis. Now we can actually add a blend between the up vector and our current position. So to do that, I'll set our new normals to be a linear interpolation. For now, you can consider this one as a blend between the up vector and the normals that we already have. And the way to blend between these two, because we need some sort of slider, would be this slider called blend. And add parentheses here, otherwise it will not work. Now, as you can see, they are all going up because the new orientation is actually up. By clicking here, you have a slider to choose how much you want them to be inclined. So it's just a simple thing that you can use to make them spaced up, but you can control how much. By doing that, you have a very clean control to see if the intersections are happening or not. See here, I still have an intersection. And that's fine. Also, because when we simulate them, they will all go up and they will behave correctly. Okay, so it just took two seconds to order everything. As you can see, we still have our toy geometry grouped with a network box and also the string and also the balloon. The main difference is that we also have some groups here that I will explain in a second. And then here we have all the point attributes that we created and modified in just a single network box. And then I clean a little bit our network. These groups are useful to select all the geometry. So this one is selecting all the balloon. As you can see, it has the same nomenclature here, the same expression $OS and it's being called balloon. It's some primitives and just leaving it as default with this one selected as you can see we'll select the whole geometry of the uh, source. This is doing exactly the same thing by its called string and this one too. Why well, this is useful? Because when they will be all merged over here, we need a way to differentiate between them. And so later we can differentiate them because they are in different groups. And it will be crucial because now that we're going to add some balloon constraints, each one of them, the balloon, the string and the toy, uh, needs to behave in a different way. The last step before adding the constraints is an attribute delete. I'm just deleting mask. So finally, next step and probably the most important one of the whole tutorial. Uh, we need to create some constraints. Let's start from the uh, toy. So for that one, I want to create a strut soft body. A strut soft body is actually composed by some balloon cloth constraints and some balloon stress constraints. At this point, you should know how the balloon cloth constraints are made. If you don't, uh, take a look to the old balloon videos when we explore balloon cloth in that. If you want to visualize that just the balloon stress constraints, I will move this over for a moment. Hold Y to delete all of this and just connect the balloon struts and let's go inside as you can see it's creating this toothpick like internal structure that will give the object some uh, stiffness and volume when it will be deformed so we can reconnect it back together and we can group all of this into a network box and call it toy to make the uh, balloon constraints know that understand that we actually want to go into the group and change it to toy. So that's why we created those groups before. They're actually very useful now. And let's leave everything as default for now. And let's create something for the balloon. Balloon configure balloon. Again, the base, it's a balloon cloth constraints. And then we have some balloon pressure constraints. Let's plug everything in. The pressure constraints store the original volume. So squishing one place will expand another like a balloon. So let's also group this one into a network box and call it balloon. As you can see in the viewport, everything is going crazy because we still need to assign the group balloon to these constraints. So let's actually do that. And now we can assign some constraints to the strings. We are looking for a constraint called hair constraints. So we have a volume configure hair. We can plug everything in and let's make sure actually to select the string group. I will group this one just to be clean and I will name it strings. As you can see, we are using the group that we previously created and we are assigning them different properties using the balloon constraints. The last step is to connect the string to the balloon and the string to the geometry. So to do that, we have another kind of constraints that's called the stitch constraints. So let's connect everything together. And here I want to connect my root group that we previously had, this one that, as you can see now, gets highlighted by Vellum. We want to connect it that to the toy geometry. And we want to duplicate this one and connect it properly. This time, I want to change this group to tip and I will leave the target group to balloons. So now we are connecting the tip to the balloons. So let's see what we need to change to make the simulation actually work. Into the toy, go into the balloon cloth and change the mass 
to 0 0.06. Let's go into the stretch stiffness and change it to 1e plus 9 and into the band stiffness and change it to 1000. We will leave the balloon struts as default for now. In the balloons I want the cloth constraints to have a band stiffness of 1000 and then I want the balloon pressure constraints to have a stiffness of 10,000. Let's not forget to change the rest length scale to 3 into the pressure constraints and then into the balloon hair I want to change the mass to be uniform and I will leave it as default and then stretch stiffness to 100,000 while the band we can leave it as 10 for now. And then we can start our simulation because the vellum stitch constraints we can leave them as default so I will create a simple vellum solver. I will plug everything in, I will make sure to be on the first frame and I will visualize it. In the vellum solver we only want to change the sub steps to 3 that will increase the time but the simulation will be more accurate. I will add a ground position and I will adapt based on my geometry. Drag the middle mouse button, align it with the ground more or less. And then into the solver I want to create a force that moves my uh, balloons up. In that way they will drag the whole geometry with them thanks to the stitch constraints. To do that I will create a geometry angle and here where it asks for a group I will write balloon so I'm making sure that it will select only my balloons and into the X expression I want to create a force so V at force equal to set 0 comma 2 comma 0 so as this is XYZ we are setting a force going up into the Y direction. If we go out and we actually press play you can see our balloon starts inflating and then our force that moves up, it's also moving all our geometry up. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's both complex sort of because we have different kinds of constraints. We learned a lot and the effect, I think it's pretty sick. So let's do some cleanup before adding everything to Solaris. Adding a node, calling it out sim. Then I want to separate our geometry in order to give them some name attributes. In that way, uh, Solaris will know that they are different between each other and so we can assign them different materials. So let me demonstrate that. I will create a split node. In the first one, I will select toy and then I will create another split node. And then in this one, I will plug it into the second input and I will change this one to string. So I had to refresh my viewport, so I went here and pressed Ctrl T. I will create a name and I will assign the first one to the strings. So here I will name this one string. Here this one will be called balloons. And then in the third one I actually want to do something a little bit more complex because you see the geometry still has these very messy UVs and also the, the topology is not the best. I will use a point deform. So in the first input we want the original geometry. This one, the clean one. Then into the second one we want the remeshed one this one and in third one we want the output of our simulation of course let's make sure to select only the uh, toy and not the rest if we visualize this you see that now we have a clean topology on our geometry and if i also enable the shaders i have my completely shaded toy being simulated correctly yeah, because now if i actually merge all of this together you see that it will work exactly the same but the main difference is that the geometry here is clean and this is a very powerful workflow because you are actually creating some geometry, some topology to be simulated. Then that means that it will be triangulated and very dirty technically. And then using this node, you can actually superimpose a proper geometry, the first one that you had, that it's actually clean. And another reason why this workflow is very useful because it's very production-like. In a production, you have like a very clean topology modeled by some uh, modelers. You will need to keep the topology in the same way. And here, let's not forget to add the name attribute also to the toy. So here I will write toy. I will make sure to create a final null. I will plug it in and call it out scene. And now it's time to create a lock net. To recall each, each single one of these, I will create some nodes here too. I will plug one here and I will name it after this one. So I will name it string. Another one here and I will name it out balloon. And another one here and name it out toy. Actually, now we can plug this one into the merge. So I will select all three of them, click here and merge everything together. I will just tidy everything up a little bit. And let's go into Solaris. I will create some SOP import nodes. I will press Ctrl and here. And I want to select my out toy. Then I will do the same with my out string. And then I will do the same with my out balloon. Let's merge everything together. So again, selecting all of these and clicking here. And let's give it some 
proper names. As you can see, we have a slight problem with the width. That's because uh, Solaris expects us to define a width attribute before coming in. So I will pin this viewport here. That means that I will see the result of Solaris, but then I will go back here and I'll create a very simple attribute rango. I will plug in the string before the output. And the only thing I need to define is a float attribute called width equal to a slider that we can control. I will just name it width, close everything and click here. For now, I value that I think the work for me was 0 0.002. And now we can go back to Solaris. So at this stage, we will set some lights. So I will create a dome light and then I will go into texture and I will like my texture here. I got this texture from uh, Polyhaven where you can find free HDRI. I will leave a link in the description. And if I visualize that, I should be able to see the sky behind. We see that the color is here, but it's not getting translated because this color is actually coming from a shader that was built for Mantra, not for Karma. If we go here into the geom test geometry rubber toy, we need to right click and type properties. We can go into extra files and here you will find the toy Lores. And if you click save as file, you can find the folder where you can save it as file. So I've done that. And after I have my text exported I can create something called attribute from map to make sure I don't see the pre-existing shader I will go again into the rubber toy and disable the shading then I can plug it in this other the attribute from map actually before the out and by visualizing you see it's applying a random pattern here but we can change our texture to be our flip toy texture that we exported before and as you can see now we are applying a texture and assign it to the CD so it's saved as a color diffuse attribute we can connect it here we can just go back into solar and you'll see that your geometry now has the correct color and that's amazing just a little trick for you to know okay let's check what I've done here so I've added a distant light just to simulate the light of the sun and it's this one that you see right here these are my settings if you want to set the same ones and also the dome light it has been multiplied by this color with this one you can influence how much it will look like a sunset on the camera instead we have a vertical aspect ratio because this camera render settings node is defining uh, to have it and we are setting that to XP. that's important in the camera again we have a, an animation so if we press play we see that the camera starts following the rubber toy flying into the sky it's a very simple animation to do it just like some keyframes in the start of the animation and in the end just lightly offset it so actually the rubber toy can go out of the screen before the end of the actual video before exporting let's actually work on some materials i've created a material library and i've created a material called toy inside the only thing i'm doing i am importing my color uh, in softs is named cd in usd is named uh, display color because it's a color i'm setting that to a float tree and i'm plugging that into the base color i'm changing the just lightly the properties to make it a little bit shinier like it's sort of like a rubber duck and then I, i'm assigning that to the geometry just simply clicking on auto fill and assign to geometry and i am just dragging the geometry that i want to assign this material to over here then for the balloon we will need to use a material linker as you can see here i have this library that is popping up for me that's because i already experimented a little bit with this scene but if you do not have this amd material library you will need to go onto the website over here and find your materials in my case it was aluminum i just downloaded it and once you download make sure to extract the folder and then here you can check open amd material x library and you will find your folder the extracted one and press accept and that's how you can import a free material x material from the material x library and once you have it you only need to go here and in this case we want to play that to the balloons so just drag and drop in onto the balloon geometry and although this tip review will be a little bit weird you can always try to render and see how does it look like and for now i think i like it a lot so the only thing left for me is to set a frame range i will render from around frame 28 i think it was fine to frame 105 amazing let's do 106 just to be sure and let's render so that's all for me today i really hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did drop a like and subscribe to the channel that helps a lot here's the final result and i hope you try to replicate it if you do let me know in a comment i will be more than happy to help you troubleshoot any possible issues that you have in your setup thank you for staying until the end and i will see you in the next one